A report has revealed a new Knicks trade target, and also they made a big signing this morning, and we have to break it all down. So what's up, guys? Welcome back to Knicks Digest. It's Chris here, and we're going to jump right into the video, as we always do, because there has been a recent report that indicates there is a new Knicks trade target when it comes to the center position. Obviously, we know the Knicks are still on the hunt for that backup center, that they're going to go into the season with Precious Achua and Jericho Sims as the backups to Mitchell Robinson. They are going to be looking for a massive move at center to get a true backup center and there's been a new report and let's take a look because it is none other than Jonas Valanciunas as Sean Devaney mentioned the expectation is that Washington will begin looking for a deal for Valanciunas in December when he becomes eligible to be traded now, the reason is because the Wizards are trying to lose. They're a tanking team. They don't want to win games this year. They want as high of a pick as humanly possible so they can hopefully draft Cooper Flagg, the real prize of the 2025 draft. He's almost certainly going to go first overall. Teams are planning to tank for him. Essentially, people believe he can become a ne uh, the next like NBA superstar to really pop up. And... Yeah, there's going to be a lot of teams looking for him. It's why the Brooklyn Nets made that trade with the Knicks and then also used another trade using the trade they did with the Knicks to send Mikhail to New York to get their own 2025 pick back from Houston. This was all a ploy. All these teams are looking for Cooper Flagg. If you know that you're not really contending or likely to make the playoffs, you're probably looking to lose in hopes to land Cooper Flagg. This is going to be shades of Zion when it comes to teams or just running to the bottom of the standings to land him, and that leaves the Knicks in position to go out there and make a trade for Jonas Valanciunas, a player who I'm very interested in the Knicks pursuing because of how different he is from Mitchell Robinson. Now, Tom Thibodeau prefers his backup centers to kind of be mirrors of the starting center. When the Knicks signed Nerlens Noel, the whole point was always a worse version of Mitchell Robinson. When Hartenstein first came to the Knicks, the thought was, okay, well, we're going to play him similarly to Mitch. Eventually, things changed, and it clearly worked for the better with the Knicks, which is why I'm interested in the Knicks going out and doing this again, getting a center like Valanciunas who can space the floor more, who can hit mid-ranges at an efficient rate, excellent from the elbow, can hit some threes. I'm really interested in the prospect of this. They would have to make it work through a trade involving Precious Achua. And Devaney mentioned through a Bleacher Report article that the Knicks, according to an anonymous NBA executive, will see how their center spot develops and also mentioning the Lakers or the Warriors as interested teams. The Warriors specifically, if they do not pull off a Laurie Markkinen trade. Right now, the Warriors are the front runners to land Markkinen. And I don't exactly know if your pivot should be Valanciunas. But to each their own, the Warriors are not a very good organization anymore. They're just hanging on to Steph Curry. And that's about it. But with the Knicks, I do like the idea of this. I think it creates a much different look for these Knicks teams. And we know that Tom Thibodeau likes the idea of OG Ananobi guarding big men, like the best big men on a team. We saw OG guard Joel Embiid at points. We could, we'll probably see him guarding a bunch of different talented big men throughout this season in different lineups. So there would be less of the worry of, okay, well, Valanciunas isn't a traditional rim-protecting center the way the Tibbs would like. It is a different look, but it could help having a very different player as the backup. Now, also, I could see the Knicks just going out and going for Nick Richards and getting him and solving that problem or trying to get Jalen Duren, though I don't see that, or Walker Kessler is likely, considering how young they both are and how much both teams will ask for those specific players, whether it's the Pistons with Duren and certainly the Jazz with Walker Kessler, considering it's Danny Ainge. Now... I think Valanciunas is a semi-realistic target. The money doesn't exactly align. The Knicks would probably have to trade Jericho Sims along with Precious Achua. Now, Precious would be traded. He makes around $6 million. Or it makes exactly $6 million. Valanciunas makes around $9 million. So you're going to have to add a bit more there. Jericho Sims' is $2 million could come in handy. I don't see the Knicks trading Deuce McBride in a trade like that. It makes no sense. They theoretically could trade Cameron Payne also if they like Tyler Kolick and decide they don't really have a need for Payne. They could move him to maybe lose a little bit of depth at the point guard position, but also at the same time increase some depth at the center position, one that definitely is in need of more depth because, well, the Knicks starting point guard is Jalen Bronson. He's going to play 37, 38 minutes in the playoffs as long as he's fully healthy. And so you're really looking at a guy for 10 minutes to back him up. I think a mixture of Deuce and DiVincenzo and potentially even Tyler Kolick can do that just fine without Cameron Payne anyway. 
So I do think that it would be interesting to see them do that. And Valanciunas is a very solid player. He puts up 12 points per game with nine rebounds, also grabs two assists. Good shooter, good shooter from the field, can hit threes. Obviously, he's just a catch-and-shoot three-point shooter, and only 16% of his shots are threes. He doesn't really shoot too many at all, but they don't need him to. He's more of a mid-range center who's also a good post scorer. It just gives him a much different look from what Mitchell Robinson is. So I'd be interested in it. Also, it's a tradable contract down the line if you want to move him again. He's making $9 million every year for the next three years. So it is something that could be of interest. But that is not all the news we have for today because the New York Knicks also made a very nice signing and that is in the form of none other than Kevin McCuller Jr. Who, according to Michael Scotto, who broke the news a few hours ago, the New York Knicks and Kevin McCuller Jr. have agreed to a two-way contract. McCuller was an all-12 first team or all, all Big 12 first team honors this past season at Kansas. He was also named to the Big 12 all-defensive team and earned Big 12 third team honors in 2023. Now, Kevin McCuller, there was a lot of expectation that he was actually going to go to the draft a while ago. This was just his fifth year in college. He was kind of plagued with an injury and stayed around college for a while to continually improve. He was actually in R.J. Barrett's high school class, so he's older, and the Knicks have put him on a two-way contract. And I know that seems like nothing news, but it's not. Because when you look at the Knicks team, they were running out of rotation spots. Putting Kevin McCuller on a two-way for the next season means that he's probably just going to play in the G League anyway, like we all expected him to. Now, I think he's higher up on the list than rookies Pacom, Tadier, and also Ariel Hockporty in the sense of could potentially get minutes. I guess Hockporty and McCuller depends more on injuries. It's weird that Pacom is the guy who's least likely going to get minutes, but that's what happens when you pick a project pick. Also, any draft pick outside of the top five is essentially a guessing game anyway. If you don't believe me, go look at every other draft. Even the top five, there's usually at least two complete whiffs in it anyway. This is not the NFL. The NBA draft, you're constantly missing on picks. It's basically a crapshoot outside of the first overall pick, if we're being completely honest. But... Also, at the same time, when you look at Kevin McCuller Jr., he is a guy who could have had an impact this season. And who knows? Maybe he gets off a two-way deal. Maybe somehow he ends up playing really well in the G League and he works his way up faster than expected. He's of that Josh Hart mold. He's definitely someone who I think could be a steal of the draft in the long term because he just plays the exact Tom Thibodeau, Josh Hart style of basketball that's so useful to so many teams. Now, I'm a fan of Kevin McCuller Jr.'s game. I loved the draft pick when they did it. And when you look, I mean, Jonathan Giovanni, this is back in late 2023. The first thing he mentions is that it's another triple-double for per projected first-round pick in Kevin McCuller Jr. This is not a guy who was, like, hanging on to being drafted. No, before he got a knee injury, he was fully expected to be drafted in the first round. He's a very, very talented wing. He can play a lot of positions. He's so of that Josh Hart, Bruce Brown mold. It was a great selection for the Knicks. I think it'll be a steal at 56 overall in a few years from now. But right now, the Knicks are focused on title contention. And in order to get that done you do have to realize they need more veteran-type players than they need a guy who's unproven. Now, in college, in his fifth year in college, Kevin McCuller put up 18 points with six rebounds and four assists per game. Obviously, the shooting's a bit of a concern, but he had a very positive PER his entire career. He was an above-average PER player. Very good all-Big 12 player twice, also all-defense. Kevin McCuller Jr. is the type of player that you love to see a team pick at 56 overall. Absolute win for the Knicks there. I love the idea of signing him to a two-way. This does make you think that maybe Chuma Okiki will get an actual roster spot and will get off that Exhibit 10 for an actual deal. Or maybe it just goes to Ryan Archdiakono, which I'm fine with too. Now, I'm very curious to see what happens. And obviously, we're going to see come training camp, guys. It's August. We're a month away from Knicks basketball. It might be pregame or it might be preseason. It might be just some training camp stuff and media day. I don't care. I'm so happy. We're so close to the season very secretly. It'll be here before you know it. Also, the NFL is coming back. We got that to hold you over. If you're a Jets fan, make sure you tune into Jets Digest, which is coming very soon. You'll see me there and another creator who is to be named later. I've actually talked about him a bit on live streams. But, um... Guys, I do want to hear from you down below, so like this video, subscribe, turn on post notifications. You don't want to miss any content. Knicks Digest to the moon, baby. We're so close to 7,000 subscribers. Get us there. It'll mean the world to me and Darielle. 
Guys, have a phenomenal day. It's Monday. Let's tackle this week head on. We'll get through it. The weekend will be here before y'all know it. Watch some Knicks Digest to kill the time, guys. Go Knicks.